Hi, my friends, CA here. With MTK. And on Fridays, we talk about... Games. Games. Games a little bit of a geek twist. This time, we're going to talk about Hogwarts Battle, Defense Against the Dark Arts. Two-person competitive deck building game. We've been doing a lot of Harry Potter games as of late. We're just gonna demonstrate one of the rounds of playing the game, and I'm looking forward to stunning you! Ah. <laughs> we have the game board set up. Here is our dueling board. We have our position at either end. So this is the classroom area, which contains items, spells, or allies that we will sort of add to our hand as we go. The library, hex cards, if you are asked to perform a hex or take a hex. And our various health, attacks, influence, and then when you get a deadly strike. Every player begins with a starter set and there will be nine cards and in that starter pack they're the same for both players is seven Alohomora spells, one wand, and one cauldron. In addition to your starter set you get to choose one ally and an ally is somebody who is going to obviously help you in the game and they're always visible in the game and they have abilities and you'll see there's duplicates of each ally because we can have the same ally you're going to want to put your ally that you picked into your deck and then shuffle it from that deck you're going to want to choose five cards that you keep to yourself the remaining cards are your draw cards this is your hand and when you're done you will put them face up in a discard pile as MTK is already done, you're going to choose your token and put it on the start position of the dueling board and that's the token for your house. And again, they have multiple versions. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let Gryffindor go first because they always feel like they should be number one and I wouldn't want to get in their way. Mm -hmm. And then if you do win, I'll just say it's the advantage of going first. Your house card will tell you what you can do on your turn and everybody does the same steps. So it is resolve any hexes. If you happen to have a hex in your hand, you don't start with hexes. Then you're going to play the five cards you chose to generate effects. Gain influence, gain attacks, gain health. I played four Alohomoras, so I gain... Four influence. Look how uh, influential you are. Yeah. Um, and then I use the wand to gain one attack. It will indicate to you at the top whether it is a spell, an ally, or a an item. item that you can add. And then it will also tell you the effect it has. So on this wand card, for example, by playing it, MTK gains one attack. So you played your cards and your cards go into a discard pile. Any of the abilities you gain through your cards, you have to play. Attack, which is a lightning bolt, is an attack on your opponent, which causes, depending on the number of lightning bolts, causes them to go back when you discard. And then your influence are the coins you're gonna use to buy items from the classroom. Or you can borrow a book from the library. Unlike the starter deck, the bottom of each of these cards has a value to it. So you have to have equivalent or more influence points to buy that. You add it to your discard pile, which will eventually be your hand to play the game. So MTK has four, which gives him two options. And then I flip over the classroom to start the next turn. turn. That's my turn! <laughs> my hand of five is all the same spell, which means I get five influence points. I'm going to buy one Guardium Leviosa. I now play my Toad, which is my ally and its special abilities to gain one heart every turn. Three Alohomoras, so I gain three influence. Cauldron. Since I'm at max health, I'm going to choose to gain an influence. Unlike the other cards, the books are like a lot. It's from the library. You borrow it. It goes into your hand, but on your turn when you play it, you don't discard it. It goes back to the no. library. If you draw an ally, they actually become part of your always on deck. Two influence. One wand. Gain an attack. Gain influence or one health. So I'm going to changes for an influence even though I'm down one because I can't get anything for two and at least with three I can get something and then I'm going to attack uh, Rift and Sempra gain an attack discard the card mm -hmm. gain the health then sag you sure. now you have a hex card in your discard, discard pile <gasps> 
I know! Two little homers, two influence, and then a wand, another attack, mm. and then one, two. So my hand is deadly. Five whole little homers. <laughs> As you stockpile these tokens, if you don't use them, they just get discarded. So you can't carry any tokens over, so you want to use them as much as you can in the game. And then you drop a new hand. Yeah, another hex. A wand to gain an attack. Ooh, I'm getting close to the stun zone. All right, I said your turn is you have to resolve hexes first. I have a hex in my hand. The back and forth can be pretty quick. Like I do my cards, you do your cards. But that doesn't mean the game play is quick. As I said, we've just played one round. Especially in the beginning when all you have is one way to attack. Yes. Um, and then seven ways to gain cards. And that's all you have. I use my ally to heal me. <laughs> The toad is very powerful. What are you doing? Licking the toad? <laughs> Hypno toad, you are healed, you are healed, you are healed. Two little homoras. Petrificus totalis. Like, gain the attack since you don't have an ally for me to send back this time. Erictum sempra. Gain another attack. Books. Gain two influence. And with my four influence, I'm gonna buy the sonorous, which is gain one attack and two influence. I'm gonna attack you twice. I got my nice little allies come back. Alohomora, one influence. Cauldron, I think I will uh, gain health. Wingardium Leviosa, two influence. And if I buy an item, it can go to the top. And Feather, gain one influence. Draw a card. And because I discard this card, I draw another card, which gives me two Alohomora. So I'm gonna buy a uh, Stupefy. On this turn, I will contest that Gryffindor won by stunning me. Um, but this is where I have my backup of. That's because I let you go first. Yeah, it was a close match, though. It was very close. Once a player's been stunned, the card has three little Death Eater symbols on it. I would place one of these metal tokens on it. And once that card gets filled up, that means the total game is over and whoever has the three is the loser. You use words like loser in competitive games. <laughs> loser. Loser. Busy. Then you start a new round. You play at least three rounds to empty case point. It could take five rounds. You still maintain the deck you've started, everything else, the classroom, all the setup remains the same. Any unused effects go back into the pile. All of the players are moved to the start position again. Some it's a longer walk than others. <laughs> no, we don't call each other losers. But when you're a loser, you're, you're a loser. loser. Sometimes you just had to point out the obvious. Mm -hmm. That was... Hogwarts Battle, Defense Against the Dark Arts. It was the first round. Then we would set up to go through the next two rounds. We have played the original Hogwarts Battle, the cooperative game, and I'll include a link below to that gameplay that we shared. What I like about this is it has a lot of the same mechanism. It still has the core deck building aspects. I like the competitive variation of it. Um, I much prefer the cooperative. So I agree. I like both games for different reasons. I like the fact that they're based on the same kind of platform. Really the big difference is instead of working together to defeat villains, you're working against each other to stun. So even while we're competing with each other, like trying to stun each other, as Slytherin, I don't have an ability compounding the challenge of stunning me. There isn't a constant effect that is impacting your gameplay. So really like the game. It, the game got a lot faster towards the end when we had multiple attacking cards and you could take your opponent down um, two or three health points per turn. You're right, the first round can be a little slow because of those cards, but it does get a little quicker. So on Fridays, you can find us here talking about games we like, games with a little bit of geek twists, and I think we've talked about a few Harry Potter yeah. <laughs> games. It's kind of a yes. theme well, that we Harry all like. Potter shirt. I am wearing my Hogwarts shirt, you're right. Wow. If you like this content, make sure to let us know that by leaving a thumbs up on the video. If you haven't already, we'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe, and if you really want to support this channel, you could click the bell icon so you can be notified when any mm -hmm. more videos like this are uploaded mm -hmm. to our channel. And until next time. Until next time, to, to, to be, be out. out. Woo -hoo -hoo.